All right, buckle up everybody, we're diving deep into the world of Venom. Specifically, his last dance. Venom, The Last Dance, the final film in the trilogy. It hit theaters just a few weeks ago, and well, we've got a lot to unpack. Yeah, this one really takes Eddie and Venom's uh, relationship to a whole new level. I mean, we get the action, we get the laughs, but it gets pretty deep too. It does. Like, right off the bat, you've got Eddie and Venom on the run. N not just from, you know, the usual cops and bad guys, but from other symbiotes too. Talk was, about pressure. Oh, yeah. They're basically fugitives, right? Yeah. Stuck between a world that fears them and uh, and their own kind that sees them as a threat. It's like the ultimate test of their bond. Exactly. Yeah. And when you're dealing with a creature like Venom, who's essentially immortal, this whole last dance thing takes on a whole new meaning, right? You basically think, what even I is the future for be me like Venom? And this film doesn't shy away from those big questions either. It goes way deeper than just the superpowers and the cool, you know, symbiote effects. We're talking about the emotional, the psychological connection between Eddie and Venom, codependency, questions of identity, even the nature of consciousness. There's some really heady stuff in there. I mean, you're essentially exploring what it means to be human, or in Venom's case, almost human, right? When you have two beings sharing a body and a mind, well, things get complicated. Absolutely. And let's not forget Tom Hardy holding it all together. He's playing both Eddie and Venom. And I gotta say, the way he just transitions between those two, it's incredible. It's seriously impressive. It goes way beyond just voice work. He's embodying two distinct personalities seamlessly, often within the same scene. It's a testament to Hardy's talent that Venom is, well, he's an icon now. He really is. But that blend of menace and humor, it's just so unique. And audiences have responded big time. Even with, I'd say, mixed reviews for The Last Dance, it was still a massive box office hit, over 300 million worldwide. Yeah, people love Venom. So the big question everyone's asking, is this really the last dance for Venom? I mean, they called it the last dance. It's supposed to wrap up the trilogy. But with this level of popularity, can it really be the end? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. Spider-Man universe is constantly growing. You've got the whole multiverse thing happening, a crossover with other Marvel characters. It's not out of the question. Fans would go nuts. I mean, Venom and Spider-Man on screen together. Right. It'd be huge. So you're saying there's a chance. There's always a chance. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. But look, even if we never get that epic showdown, this Venom trilogy has left its mark. It's changed how we think about antiheroes, you know, and it's opened the door for other R-rated superhero films, the ones that explore those darker, more mature themes. Oh, for sure. This trilogy, it's pushed boundaries, given us a character who, you know, challenges the whole good versus evil thing. We're not just rooting for the good guy. We're forced to consider the gray areas, the struggles of an antihero who's trying to, to figure out where he belongs in the world. And he's doing it with this this blend of dark humor and over-the-top action. And then you get these these surprisingly heartfelt moments, too. Exactly. It's a wild ride. It keeps you guessing. Okay, before we get too deep into the last dance itself, let's take a quick step back to Let There Be Carnage. That one introduced us to Cletus Cassati, a.k.a. Carnage. Woody Harrelson, he was fantastic. Oh, yeah. Carnage, he's pure chaos. Destructive energy unleashed. Absolutely. And that film was really key for Venom's development too, right? He starts to become more confident, more assertive, almost like he's he's preparing for the challenges that are coming in The Last Dance. It's like he's stepping into his own, right? Finding his place, even if it's a bit messy. Yeah, and those visual effects, that final battle between Venom and Carnage. Talk about a visual feast. Mm -hmm. But what always gets me about this trilogy is the way it digs into those bigger themes. Mm -hmm. You know, duality, morality, the whole good versus evil thing. It's never black and white. You're constantly questioning who to root for, what the right choice even is. It makes you think. And I think that's a big part of what makes it so successful. It's not just popcorn entertainment. It's engaging with these complex ideas. And doing it in a way that's both entertaining and thought-provoking. Yeah. And it's visually stunning. Oh, yeah. The visual effects in this trilogy are next level. You can tell they really push the boundaries of what's possible. Absolutely. They didn't hold back. And, you know, it's had a real influence on other R-rated superhero movies, too, mm -hmm. like Deadpool mm -hmm. and Joker. They owe a debt to Venom. They show that there's an audience for this kind of, you know, darker, more mature take on the genre. Definitely. And that's something we need to talk about more. But before we do, I think it's time for a break. We'll be back in a flash to really dissect The Last Dance, so stick with us. 
Welcome back, everybody. We left off talking about how Let There Be Carnage kind of set the stage for The Last Dance and how Venom has really changed what we think of when we think anti-hero. He's not exactly your Boy Scout superhero, yeah. right? Like, yeah, there's good in there, but he's chaotic and unpredictable and sometimes just plain selfish. He keeps you on your toes, that's for sure. But he also makes you think, right? Like, where is the line between good and evil? With Venom, you're never really sure which side he's going to land on. It's true. He's constantly wrestling with those two sides, the symbiote and Eddie. Like, is it ever okay to do bad things for a good reason? Can an alien being like Venom even grasp human ideas of ethics? Big questions, and I like that the movie doesn't give you easy answers. It's not all tied up in a neat little bow, you know? It makes you think, and I think that's what good storytelling should do, right? Totally. And it does it while still giving you all the fun stuff. The action, the humor, the visual effects are top-notch. I mean, Venom's design is just so cool. It's iconic. They took a kind of obscure Spider-Man villain and turned him into a star. Speaking of which, we got to talk about that Spider-Man in the room, right? Fans have wanted to see those two on screen together forever. Oh, man, don't get me started. Venom and Spider-Man, that would be epic. You've got the classic hero versus anti-hero thing, but with this added layer of their shared history through the symbiote. The possibilities are endless. The action, the banter. Imagine the visuals. It would break the box office. Absolutely. And with the multiverse in play now, who knows? It might actually happen. Here's hoping. But hey, even without a Spider-Man team up, we can't ignore what the Venom trilogy has done for superhero movies. It's pushed boundaries, yeah. show that audiences are ready for these more mature, morally complex stories. A hundred percent. Venom's success opened the door for other R-rated superhero films, films that weren't afraid to get dark and gritty. It feels like we're in this golden age of superhero movies now, where you can have all these different kinds of stories and characters, and Venom was a big part of that shift. It showed that audiences want more than just the classic good guy versus bad guy story. They want something with depth, something that makes them think. And Venom, The Last Dance is kind of the culmination of that, right? It's about confronting your past, facing your demons, and ultimately deciding what kind of mark you want to leave on the world. Oh, that's a good way to put it. It's not just about saving the day. It's about personal growth and redemption. And it's something we can all relate to, right? We all have our own struggles, our own choices to make. And even though Venom is this alien symbiote, there's something very human about his journey. I think that's why he resonates with people so much. And even though this is supposed to be the end, I have a feeling this isn't the last we've seen of him. I really hope you're right. Venom's a character that deserves to keep evolving. Okay, before we dive into the nitty gritty of The Last Dance, let's hear from you, our listeners. What are your thoughts on the film so far? What moments stood out to you? What questions are you wrestling with? Think about those as we get ready to really unpack this film. We'll be right back to break it all down. Okay, we're back, and it's time to really dig into Venom. The last dance, we've talked about everything leading up to this, but now we got to get into the specifics of this final film. So the movie picks up with Eddie and Venom. They're on the run, right? And it's not just the authorities this time. Oh, no, it's much bigger than that. They've got this new villain, played by Reese Siphons, and he is terrifying. But there's something about him, this depth. He's not just some, you know, one-dimensional bad guy. No, he's got a real motive a personal vendetta against symbiotes. He wants to expose them to the world, show everyone what they really are. Which is a terrifying thought. Oh, absolutely. And it forces Eddie and Venom to really confront the choices they've made, you know, mm -hmm. the things they've done. The stakes are incredibly high, like extinction level high. No pressure. And you can feel that tension throughout the film. Their bond is pushed to the absolute limit. They're fighting, arguing, almost like they're going to split up for good. Yeah. There's this one scene, I don't want to spoil it, but... Venom's hurt, and Eddie's trying to save him. It's heartbreaking. You know, you can see how much they need each other. It's so powerful, right? It really drives home that central theme of the movie. Like, yeah, they're different. They clash, but they're better together. They make each other whole. And that realization that they need each other, mm. it leads to some of the best, most emotional moments of the film. And then, of course, you've got that final showdown. I mean, visually, it's spectacular. Venom versus this villain and the fate of, well, everything is on the line. It's epic. And wow. I'm not going to give anything away, but that ending, it's satisfying, but it also leaves you thinking. Like, there's the sense of closure, but also this feeling that maybe, just maybe, this isn't the end. Which is what we're all hoping for, right? Oh, absolutely. I don't think anyone's ready to say goodbye to Venom just yet. Mm -hmm. He's become such an iconic character, you know? 
And I think that's what makes Venom The Last Dance such a fitting end to this trilogy. It celebrates everything we love about him, but it also acknowledges that his story isn't over. There's still so much potential there, so much more to explore. So as we wrap up this deep dive into the world of Venom, what are some of the big takeaways? What do we want our listeners to remember? Well, first of all, Venom. The Last Dance, it delivers. It's a wild ride full of action, humor, and some really touching moments. But it's also a film with a lot of heart, a lot to say about the nature of good and evil, about finding redemption, about accepting who you are, even the messy parts. It's a reminder that even anti-heroes can be complex, that they can grow and change, and that sometimes the most unlikely of friendships can be the strongest. It's a story that stays with you. It makes you think, it makes you feel, and it definitely leaves you wanting more. And on that note, We've reached the end of our deep dive into Venom, The Last Dance. But the conversation doesn't have to end here. What did you think of the movie? Did it live up to your expectations? What do you think the future holds for Eddie and Venom? Keep those symbiote senses tingling. Because who knows what's next for our favorite lethal protector? This is just the beginning.